when you are studying mathematics, don't put in 100% effort. I know this sounds counterintuitive. Yes, don't put in 100% effort. Over 50% of WASI candidates fail to get grade A1 in the WASI examination. And, you know, I've been preparing students to write the WASI and even the NOVDEC way before I even thought of writing the WASI examination. Now, oh, there's one trend. There are some notable mistakes I see students make each and every year that, you know, makes them race it for the exams. And in this video, I just want to show you that so that you can get the best grade, which is grade A in the WASI core mathematics or even the NOVDEC if you're a candidate. I always tell students, Mathematics is my favorite subject. Now, the truth is, I wasn't very good at mathematics when I was in school. Why? I wasn't getting the best grade, so I was always complaining. Now, right at the beginning of school, from primary, I thought mathematics was just about the numbers 0 to 9 and its combinations and the four operations in mathematics, which are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Now, this is all about mathematics. Anytime you see any symbol, it is just these four operations that you are combining, applying in different ways and methods. Now, if you were like me or if you are still like me, you'll be having challenges or issues with mathematics because you'll be thinking that mathematics is all about numbers. Now, my perception about mathematics being only about numbers changed when I go to the junior high school. That was where I began to encounter word problem in linear equation and then linear equalities. So I was wondering what's happening. You know, later on, moving on to the senior high school and then completing, when I started teaching, that was when I realized that mathematics is more of understanding and being able to explain it in your own words. So when you pick a topic, like let's say algebraic expression, what do you know about algebraic expression outside numbers and variables? Can you explain it in your own words? So my first point is this, you need to understand the topic beyond numbers. Now I realize that in most textbooks, the intro is an explanation to the concept. So if you pick any topic at all, trigonometry, matrices, no matter the topic, once you pick it, can you explain it in your own words, in your own understanding? Because you know, what you see to be abstract and not applicable in real life, mathematics is actually applicable in real life. Otherwise, why are we studying it? We are not just, you know, pushing something into your head. No, it's actually applicable. But the reason why mostly don't see the practical aspects is you don't study it into detail. You only stop at the surface level. And the mathematics you study to the senior high school is just the foundation of what you build up on if you are going to study in the university. So mathematics is not just about numbers. So understand mathematics in words. When a topic is introduced to you, the first thing you do is you define the topic, understand it in your own words, and even explain to your friend in your own words. You are now ready to be able to compute with your calculator what the numbers mean. Now, secondly, I've had students who were so willing to put everything, their time, their effort into understanding mathematics, but they couldn't because they didn't know this point I'm about to explain. Now, they were so stressed and, you know, thought that their tertiary education was not going to be possible because you are aware, if you don't pass your mathematics, no public university wants to accept you. Well, this point I'm going to explain, you know, I was a victim of this and I felt mathematics was bullying me. It took me years and years of trial and error to come to the realization that every topic you study at the early years, let's say from SHS 1, which is where you learn the foundational topics. Now, if you don't understand the foundational topics very well, when you get to SHS 2, SHS 3, you will struggle because the topics you study in SHS 2 and SHS 3 have their foundation to be what you study in SHS 1. So if you begin struggling with mathematics, in SHS 1 and even from your junior high school you're also going to struggle in the senior high school most students who struggle with mathematics in the senior high school they didn't actually have a good foundation from the junior high school so your early topics are your foundational topics now think of a building the foundation of a building tells you how many stories the building is going to have if the foundation is not that strong the number of stories are few but if 
the foundation takes a lot of time. It takes over <laughs> a year to get the foundation ready. It means that this is going to be a tower. So your foundational topics are so important. Now, it's so annoying because sometimes there are some topics that you need to study a topic ahead. For example, um, there are some topics you only understand them when you go to the final year, even though you study them in senior high school too. Now, how can you tell? How can you tell that this topic, the foundational topic, is a topic that is informed So maybe you should ask a friend to help you or attend some form of classes. Now, kindly watch this video till the end because I have a solution to that. Now, thirdly, when you are studying mathematics, don't put in 100% effort. I know this sounds counterintuitive. Yes, don't put in 100% effort. Now, what this means is when you are studying mathematics, try to play around with it. Ask yourself questions. Because if you are putting 100% in it, it means that when you make a mistake, you would wonder, why did I make a mistake? But if you put in 70% effort, you know that you are playing around with it. And while you are putting in the 70% effort every day, you are being consistent. You know, it is better to study mathematics every day with less effort than to wait till there's time for you to be tested before you now put in the 100% effort. It's not going to work that way. Value consistency because, you know, the more you study mathematics on your own, the more you realize a style that fits. For example, when you're solving certain questions, there are two methods. See, simultaneous equation. There is the elimination method and then there is a the substitution method. Whichever one works for you might not work for me. So don't put in 100% effort, you know, sitting by the book and, you know, trying because you don't know what you don't know. And it will only take someone who is an expert like me giving you tips and how. The first thing I'll teach you to be able to get a grade A1 in the Y Core Mathematics exam is to stop focusing too much on your textbook. You know the amazing thing? The authors of these textbooks are not the ones setting the questions. Now, the best textbook you can ever have as a student is your past question. Now, what do I mean? Now, if you are using your textbook as your main source for studying, it means that you would either be studying below the difficulty level or a little above the difficulty level. And this was my story. I realized this when I was ready to write my WASI core mathematics. You know, I was using this particular textbook and I had mastered this textbook so much. You know, I thought I already had it covered. While my friends were solving past questions, I thought, you know, they were overdoing it. But that was when I realized that I made a very big mistake. So I always teach my students that immediately you are done studying a particular topic, your next resource is the past question. You know, the past question shows you the right difficulty level and even to make it better you go for questions that are a little difficult beyond the past question so that you can be a master you know you are going for a grade a1 not just anything lower so you can get other resources you know with the internet you can get questions that are a little difficult than what you have in the past question now this will make you ready and also you realize that with the mocks that you write to prepare for the core mathematics exams you realize that you are at par with it you are even one step ahead of it so you are sure of getting your grade a1 now i know i've given you some points to work with but i want to say something now if you've been struggling for mathematics for over a year now i want you to know this now remember one of my points i said don't give it a hundred percent shot give it a 70 percent shot if you've been struggling with mathematics right from the junior high school to the senior high school, or you've been struggling with mathematics for over a year, I want you to take it to school. You can't study mathematics and know it by yourself if you're having challenges by just looking into your textbook. You need a guy, you need a helper, you need someone to help you. So I would urge you to either go to a teacher, a friend, or if possible, go on YouTube and watch videos because you see, mass is symbols. It's not... Um, words and letters with sentences that you can read and comprehend right away or even use the dictionary to get it's just symbols so you need someone to teach you and mathematics is not just about solving questions but you see using the best method to solve the question in the shortest 
possible time. Now, if you've been struggling with mathematics, I believe that you've ever made a statement, I don't like mathematics. You know, anytime you see mathematics, you are nervous, you are experiencing anxiety and so on. No. You see, the best students, you know, they actually struggle to actually understand whatever they understand. And they now believe that they can do whatever or answer any question that they are given. So you are not very different from the best students you see. It's just that they have psyched themselves. They tell themselves that, okay, I know this is difficult, but I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. So instead of saying it is too difficult, I can't do anything about it. Look for solutions rather than complain. Lastly, you have to be very good at using the calculator. Now, the calculator is just a tool. The fact that you know how to use it doesn't mean, you know, you are good at mathematics. It's just a tool. Now, this is what I always advise students to do. Don't wait till the exam is closed before you borrow a calculator. No. Start using it because, you see, the more you use it, you become used to it and you become faster at using it. Also, in solving questions in mathematics, you have to be very strategic. You want to finish before time. Start solving the easiest questions at the beginning. Because sometimes you find some of the toughest questions at the beginning of the, let's say, objectives. Question 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are very difficult. And if you are not able to get them right, you know that, you know, you might not have that energy that you started with. So I tell students that when you start, just go through it, start answering the easiest questions first. Because if you waste time on, let's say, question 25 and then question 36 is very easy. And then you go to, let's say, question 30 and you are told stop work. That question 36, that didn't require a lot of computation. You wouldn't be able to solve, so you wouldn't get the full max. And for the section B as well, don't spend more than 15 minutes on one question. Otherwise, you will be behind. So you see, you need to develop that skill. Now, I mentioned calculator. If you want to know how to use the calculator very well, kindly check the video description to see my playlist and then go through them. You must have it. Also in a link description is a link to tap on so that you receive my free guide on mathematics to get the most likely topics that will always drop in mathematics. And lastly, you don't just need a grade A in mathematics. I believe you want it is. So kindly click on the video floating on the screen to see how to get it is in all subjects. Like, subscribe, and then share this video with your friend so that they can also pass the core mathematics exams.